What's going on guys? I'm Ryan Bossery from RyeWire and most of you guys probably tune into my channel to follow this white CRX getting built that's behind me here. Um, if you've noticed, I've talked about SEMA a couple times in my videos and said that um, the CRX may be going to SEMA. Uh, since then there's been some development and what we found is that we uh, got one spot with Toyo tires in their tread pass. So that's super exciting. I am so happy that they're willing to take one of my cars. Um, we talked long and hard about it and um, you know I only got one spot out of the two that I wanted. I wanted to bring a um, little special special guest and that would be our red Civic that we're building as well as the white CRX. I've been covering the white CRX with a K-Swap build uh, for you guys for the, every pretty much episode that I've shot. Uh, we also have a red Civic that I've showed just barely once in one of the videos. So uh, what's actually going to happen is since we have one spot, the red Civic's actually kind of a better well-rounded build. So Stan from Toyo said, Ryan, I want you to just pick a car. I want you to pick the one that you think is going to be best, that's going to represent yourself the best. And the white CRX is an awesome car. It's an amazing project. Uh, the owner's awesome. He's one of my great friends. Uh, we're doing a case swap in it. And the rest of the car is pretty simple. So the red Civic, on the other hand, I'm going to show you guys real quick, is this baby right here. So. What we're gonna do is we are going to divert from our white CRX build and we're gonna start talking about the red Civic. I really wish that I could have just gotten the CRX done for you, 100% done, showed you everything that you needed to know about it, but because SEMA SEMA and the famous SEMA Crunch, I literally have three weeks to finish up the red Civic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch gears on this channel. I'm gonna start talking about the Red Civic, uh, hopefully shortly after SEMA. So give me a couple months. Uh, I could get that CRX tackle that we can get back on that. But um, I'm gonna switch gears and let's see what we got with the Red Civic. So before we dive into this car, I actually wanted to get some facts straight with you. What is this car? What kind of car is it? Everybody seems to call it an EF. It's not an EF. An EF is an 88 to 91 Japanese chassis. This car is an AH or an AH5 to be specific if we're talking hatchback versus CRX. So our AH5 or known in Japan is EAT. My white Civic that you guys may have seen is an EAT. This is an AH5. If you guys call this one an EA, Cool, do it. I got it. I'm I'm on the same mindset. If you're gonna call this an EF, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. You could be talking about a whole number of cars from 88 to 91. So let's let's keep this car as EA or AH5. Um, it's a hatchback. It's an 84 to 87. Specifically, this car is an 86 to 87. Don't ask me exactly what year, I actually have no idea. They're pretty much the same from the uh, 86 and 87 chassis. Um, our car is red. It is in super good shape. It's actually been uh, restored a lot by Willie Works. Mr. Willie himself has gone through this car. He has restored all the moldings, all the trims. He has literally created things that don't exist anymore. And you know, you might be asking yourself like, how is that car so clean? You guys in California are so lucky. Uh, we are in fact very lucky. The chassis itself is in good shape. Willie though, has literally restored this thing, uh, went crazy on it and painted the whole car for us inside and out. You would never know that this car is as old as it is. We're talking 86, 87 here. So it's a really, really old car. This car is super special to me. Um, I owned, I own a car just like it. Uh, growing up, my grandmother had this car. I literally used to drive around with my grandma in the exact same car as this. Um, I owned one myself when I was um, in high school. Uh, I had a CRX, I had a Civic. Uh, these are the wonder years of the Honda. Uh, this car is nicknamed the Wonder Civic out of Japan. They call it the Wonder Civic because it was a game changer. If you think about it, you know, with the CRXs and the Civics, this is where the tuning market started. 
Um, even before the EF days, guys, this car was the jam. So if you're living in Japan in the 80s, uh, you knew this car, and this was literally a game changer for the tuning market. So it's really cool to be able to work on this car. It's really special to me, obviously. Um, I love it, and I'm super excited to be able to show something like this at SEMA being so old. Um, it, it's a really cool take on my work, and I hope that you guys like it as much as I do. All right, guys, we're going to cut to it. Let me show you what we're working with. All right, guys, so the owner of this vehicle, his name is Brandon Merlot. And as you could see, he knows what's up with Hondas. He has built a ton of Hondas, as well as some pretty cool other cars, some Porsches and some BMWs and stuff like that. But as you could tell, he has some pretty unreal taste. He loves to mix the Japanese with USDM, and that's exactly up my alley. So this car is just going to be a real treat to work on. I've been putting a lot of time in already on the car. Um, Willie has done a number of things with the outside and obviously done, and the inside, and done some awesome work. So let me just kind of show you guys, start with the engine bay. It's a, actually a Civic Type R B16B engine with some Kinsler ITBs. We have some... Uh, External reservoirs hiding under the bag. I'm going to show you guys that stuff later. It's going to be running a, um, you know, one of our wiring looms, AEM Infinity ECU, full PDM and chassis harness. Um, we're plumbing the car much the same way as some of the other builds that you've seen under the Rywire name. Uh, one thing you guys might notice is that we're running all the factory brake lines. Brandon loves OEM, and he also loves performance, and he really didn't see a need to tuck any of the brake lines. So what we did was we had Willie actually restore them. So they look pretty darn good, and as you could see, like I went through and kind of added a lot of titanium hardware, so you could see there's like some really nice little hardware dressing up stuff. Um, our plate for our wiring harness is all you know really nice and kind of loud and stands out so you know i kind of agreed with him that we don't necessarily need to do the brake tuck quote unquote on this car it's really not necessary um i was on board with his decisions and we went with it and one thing to note that's really really cool is our fabricator friend jared saganti we actually took a hotsport mount kit and what he ended up doing is one by one he recreated each mount. So these are actually DCEG Hotsport mounts. So this car can accept a D series if you really wanted to because the D and the B on the Integras go right in. So they basically one by one mounted the Hotsport mount and then created each bracket. So took the mount, created a bracket. Same thing goes in the rear. And normally you use like an EF T-bar on these cars and this is actually a DCEG T-bar. And then with a custom mount there in the back, the Hasport one. And then on this side, instead of having a mount living in this area off the front of the engine, this one is recreated with our DCEG mount and then a custom bracket. So Jared Saganti basically created this bracket and it really allows the engine to sit perfectly in the engine bay. It's in the exact same spot as Hasport mounts, as the um, EA Hasport mount kit for the Civic. Um, still maintaining really, really nice axle alignment. And yeah, I'm really happy with this car. And that's pretty much the engine bay for now. There's going to be some pretty cool stuff. Um, you can see that the Kinsler ITBs are on there, they're kind of mocked up right now. There's still some stuff I'm doing underneath the intake manifold to button all that up. But we have our injector dynamics injectors in there and we have the Kinsler ITBs um, doing some work here around the VTEC and we're putting hardware and just dressing it up and making it as clean as possible. We have a Myers custom exhaust manifold on the car and Really nice custom radiator there. 
And you guys may be wondering what these wheels are. These are BBR wheels. Super cool wheel, very rare to see. And if you look really, really closely, you could see some spoon brakes hiding under it. The blue spoon calipers with the blue center cap really went very, very well. So let's talk more about the outside of the vehicle. Obviously, we're missing some corner lights. The car is far from being done. If you notice the front lip spoiler, it may look pretty stock, but it's actually not. This is a purple speed front lip sp chin spoiler. Uh, it was available in Japan. It's a company out of Japan. I believe from what I know, um, which is little at that, but I think that these this is the company that was designing them for Mugen. So the, the Mugen front chin spoiler for the AT Civics, uh, this is the same company. So it's literally just a Mugen front chin spoiler. Same thing goes with these cool mirrors. So these are uh, Mugen or pur Purple Speed um, mirror from, uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's, it's, it's that. And I do have these same mirrors on my Civic. Um, the, the guy to talk to would be Super Twins John. John is the connoisseur of all things old school. And he's actually the one that sourced my mirrors, my lip, and Brandon's parts. So he's the one that got all this stuff. If you look to the back here, this wing is, I believe, called a live sport wing. It's very similar to like just the, the styling of the Osaka JDM link, wing. And that's actually the, the Osaka JDM wing is the one that I have on my Civic. And um, this one's slightly different. It's a bit more like, I guess you'd call it, it's fatter. It also has an addressed under tray where my wing is kind of raw under it and we had to build a um, sheet metal piece for it. But my wing's like an old school Osaka JDM, like back when people didn't even know about it in the States and John actually reached out to Kazuhiro and got one. Um, but yeah, this is a live, excuse me, live sport. And I don't really know too terribly much about it other than it's a Japanese brand that was probably, that's probably long out of business. Um, there again, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, this is a really cool, it adds a great look to our car. You guys can see it from the back. Uh, last thing I want to mention about the exterior of this car is that it is the factory color scheme. So you guys may be wondering, the first thing you probably notice is that it's red and silver. And if you've seen these cars before, uh, they were red and silver. So Brandon, owner of the car, like I said, he's a connoisseur of, of all things Japanese, US, and OEM. And that's why he went with the factory color scheme. It's super crazy that it's just like a, the factory two-tone. And it makes it honestly look, because anybody would have just said, just color change it. But Brad is like, I don't want to color change it. I want it to look like it originally was. And it looks like this is just like a museum kept car, but it's actually a restoration. So it's really, really cool that Brandon went that route and had Willie paint the car like this. All right, so moving inside the car, we got some OEM door panels. Um, the dash is completely out right now. I was working on the pedals. Um, I was also working down here on the floor. You guys could see that there is an AEM Infinity fitted on the floor. We're gonna have a PDM mounted here on the left, and then that's an AEM Infinity on the right. So if you guys could see the wiring goes up and goes into our connector over there. So we're gonna have all the electronics mounted, hopefully pretty soon. You can see I was, here's a center, center console. It looks like Brandon's dog might have chewed up his e-brake handle there. And then I got some protection on the floor there because I don't want to scratch up the paint even though it's under the seat. Store panel. And then let's talk about this <clears throat> rear section. So if you guys are got a keen eye, you could see the suspension that Brandon went with. It's uh, some pretty high dollar shit. And this another this cage work was also done by Jared Saganti. He's the one that did the mounts. Jared's work is freaking amazing, man. 
So this this roll bar is it's pretty pretty awesome piece. And then over here we did our radium surge tank. Uh, fuel starvation is a pretty crazy thing on these cars. There's like no baffling at all, and the way that the pumps are set up, it's like external. Uh, yeah, you don't want to track these cars without a surge tank. So this is a radium unit with a built-in fuel pressure regulator. It's pretty freaking rad. And then of course you could see the XRP HS79 hoses that match my shoes and my shorts. So today I came prepared. I uh, came in my XRP colors. You guys can see they're all plumbed in. And, and then we have a radium filter right here. Um, I'm trying to get creative with some stuff, but just let's not look at that too terribly much right now. Um, I, I have some plans to make it fit and, and look a little bit better than it does right now. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, this car is super, super meticulously kept and cared for as well as painted just phenomenally. And you guys will trip the fuck out, but this was actually painted in Willie does all of his paint in his garage. So it's pretty incredible to see. All right, so let's have a look from under. If you guys could see, there's our brand new LSD transmission. Moroso pan, our custom header that's meticulously built for fitment and clearance in this small engine bay. A Wisecraft custom exhaust, which is really nice. It's this nice muffler. And the tip is kind of like a Kind of like a Mugen style, where they turned up at the back right there. Um, it was just a creative little idea, and I think it really flows with the era of this vehicle. It's an old car, so it's kind of an old style. Uh, got the gas tank out right now, as you guys can see. The chassis is in great shape. Uh, car was not built like on a rotisserie or anything, so it's just cleaned up on the bottom. There was not a real big need to like re like redo or rejuvenate the underside of the car. Um, just kind of left that alone. Probably gonna touch it up. Just any like welding burn throughs or anything like that. I'm just gonna hit with a can. Um, some undercarriage stuff. The reason why the gas tank is out is because it is sitting here on the floor. We have our original in front of us, and then our new unit back here. As you can see, we're using this Holly pickup. The Holly pickup's gonna get stuffed inside the tank. Like I said, fuel starvation is a huge problem with this car, so Brandon was like kind of adamant about using one of these Holly units. Um, we have our pickups and even brand new straps in this bag. So I'm really, that's what I'm doing right now, is just going through everything, figuring out how I'm gonna secure the Holly system to the factory system. So as you guys can see under here, I got a helper pump, and I'm just kind of starting to do some work. It's a little bit of a challenge. I'm kind of saving it till now because I was trying to do a lot of the easier stuff first. But one thing that I want to really mention is the torsion system. So this car actually uses torsion bars. So if you wanted to lower this car, all you'd have to do is just adjust that bolt. See how it's hanging right now? It's because it's, it's unloaded, so the suspension's unloaded. How it works is there's actually a bar that twists through here, and then there's a cap on the end right there. So if you change that bar, it's like changing your spring rate. So this is a very old school design, and uh, Brandon, Brandon tracks and races all of his cars, even if they're in really nice condition, he just still just be a little bit more easy on them, but he loves to get his cars out on the racetrack. Like literally all of them that he's built have been tracked <clears throat> and this torsion system is going to be an interesting one to see how it compares even upgraded to some of the other systems that, and other kinds of suspension like Porsches and whatnot that he's used to driving on. And then in the back, it's pretty crazy. There's a beam, it's called a pan hard bar. And this is an adjustable piece. And it goes from, it goes from the chassis on one side, so the driver's side, the left side of the car in this case, it goes down 
and then it secures to a solid rear beam. So basically, this is like a truck in the back of the car, a truck axle. See how it's just one solid axle? This whole thing could move left to right if that pan hard bar wasn't in place. It would just wobble back and forth because there'd be nothing for this bar to stay secure on. All right, guys. Well, I hope I didn't bore you too much. Hopefully, you learned something about our car. Um, at minimum, maybe you learned a little bit of something about the suspension. So um, glad to be helpful, and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm probably not going to be in too terribly much detail on this build because SEMA is going to get crazy for me. I'm uh, pulled in many, many different directions during SEMA time. So what I'll probably do is I'll do another video. Um, I'm hoping to release this one right before SEMA, and then I'll release a second video of the car all done. Um, I'll show you guys how it how it looks, and I'll drop that hopefully um, the week of SEMA. That's the goal. So um, in the meantime, I hope to get some videos up of the CRX that I have kind of stashed away, and uh, see you soon.